Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on dealing with prohibited content or activity. Today we're going to be talking about first response, documentation, and then chain of custody. We have a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and jump right in. And first up is the first response to dealing with prohibited content or activity. Now, prohibited content or activity can be anything that is against the law or restricted by company policy, as in unauthorized programs being installed, additional hard drives being added, virus activity and other malware, unauthorized access and viewing prescribed content can all be deemed as either prohibited content or activity. As an IT professional, it is your responsibility to know your organization's IT acceptable use and security policies. So what are your responsibilities? First off, you need to know how to identify prohibited content or activity. Recognize that the activity or content is either unauthorized or illegal. You need to know your organization's acceptable use and security policies. If it is against policy, it is a security incident by definition. Report it through the proper channels. If it is clearly illegal, the obligation is to report not only through the chain of command, but also to the proper authorities. To not report an incident is to become an accessory to the incident. Follow the proper procedures for reporting, so you need to know your organization's security policies. You also need to practice data and service preservation. All data and services need to be preserved as evidence. Often the best approach is not to touch the system and to restrict access to it. Turning off the system or using the keyboard can destroy vital evidence. If required to stop a virus or malware attack, unplug the network cable only. Other than that, leave the system alone. Now let's move on to documentation. Proper documentation is vital. Use your organization's appropriate documentation form. So you need to know your organization's acceptable use and security policies. As a first responder, your observations can be key evidence, so you need to document your observations thoroughly. Interview and document the responses of other people involved. Documentation can be used as evidence. A chain of custody document is vital in any proceeding. Properly documenting an incident can lead to improved future responses. Some of the things that you need to document are any changes that have occurred since you first responded to the prohibited content or activity. Document any steps that have been taken to reduce security risks. Remember that any changes to the system may alter the evidence. Remember to preserve the situation as close to how it was found as possible. Now let's move on to a chain of custody. Chain of custody logs establish control of the evidence. Chain of custody logs show who has had access and when they have had access to the evidence. Chain of custody logs in themselves are also evidence as they verify what is presented in court is the same as what was collected. An improper chain of custody log can negate any evidence that has been collected. You need to work at protecting the evidence. Restrict physical access to the systems involved. Never power down the system. The contents of random access memory can be recovered with specialized tools, but it is volatile, which means if you power down the system, it's gone. If anything is changed, evidence may be lost, so do not access files, as the attributes will be changed and evidence will be lost. Secure the evidence. Create a solid chain of custody. Now that concludes this session on dealing with prohibited content and activity. We talked about the first response to that prohibited content or activity, and then we talked about documentation. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm looking forward to doing another one.